Chapter 81 It was early morning and the sun was just starting to rise. The air was crisp and brisk. It was going to be a wonderful September day because Carrie was going on an adventure. The blazer was packed with trunks of clothes and boxes of case material. Bags of junk food shared the back seat with the cooler, which was full of various drinks. She pushed a couple of blankets and pillows through the back window as Devin walked up behind her. There! She stood back to admire her work. The windows of the blazer were ready to explode at any moment. She smiled at her success at fitting everything they needed into the vehicle. Do you think you can get anything else in there? Devin chuckled as he shook his head, admiring his little cutie. He was falling for her and would never allow anyone or anything to ever harm her. I think that's it, she replied seriously. Well, you're a pretty good little packer. Yep, lots of practice. Ready? He laughed and laughed as he helped her into the passenger seat. Let's hit the road, young lady. House is locked. Everything, including the kitchen sink, is in the car, so I believe we're ready. He climbed into the driver's seat, and as he pulled on his safety belt, he looked at with he looked with apprehension at Carrie. What? she asked. Oh my, I think we forgot something. What? she asked in alarm. Did you pack the hot tub? Oh, you! She play playfully slapped his arm and smiled. Devin bent down and kissed Carrie every so gently on her warm lips. Her heart skipped several beats and she eagerly kissed him back. They were well on their way. The trip took three short days and nights that were filled of reviewing case files during the day and extended lovemaking during the night. Carrie's heart was full of love and her mind was full of excitement, but through it all, her tiny photo of Maddie lived safely and securely inside a little heart-shaped locket that now hung around her neck. Carrie had bought the locket especially for Maddie's picture. Devin, on the other hand, was full of excitement and devotion inspired by his love for Carrie and his desire to solve the riddle that had been haunting him since that dreadful night in North Dakota. They shared the responsibility of driving, and as one drove, the other would read out loud from the case files. They made notes, discussed hip hypothetical conclusions, and shared their theories. Devin asked many questions about Thomas and Dr. Lewis. It was important that he fully understood the relationship between those two. Devin felt it was the key. Talk to me about what you know about Thomas's mother and stepfather, Devin asked as he guided the blazer down Interstate 40. Okay, but I'm hungry. We'll stop just outside of Little Rock, about another 30 minutes or so. Can you wait that long? Sure. I'll drink another cola. That should stop my stomach from growling. She climbed over the seat so her bottom end was close to Devin's face. Nice view, he shouted. Very funny. Want a drink? She asked from inside the cooler. Sure. Pick something for me. Carrie grabbed him a lemonade and herself a code cola. As she sat back down, popping the can, she asked, So, what do you want to know? Well, what do you remember him telling you? Uh, let me think. Um, his real father died when Thomas was about two or three. Can't remember exactly when. Then his mom remarried when Thomas was about, I don't know, seven, eight. From what Thomas had said, his mom and stepdad were really in love. He would take her to bed and breakfasts all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, it must not have been too far off because they would go once a month for a weekend, so it was probably only a few hours drive. Hmm, maybe we should make some calls. What do you think? He asked, looking at Carrie from the corner of his eyes. I think I should get out my laptop and start searching the web for B&Bs within the area. Once again, she climbed over the seat and Devin enjoyed the view. As she plopped back down and prepared her laptop, Devin put his hand over hers. I'm really enjoying your company, young lady. She looked up at him and smiled. Same here. Carrie busied herself, setting up the small compact computer and slid in the chip to allow her access to wireless communication. Let's hope I can get a reception out here. The computer sprang to life when she turned it on and within a few min minutes she was surfing the web. Wow, there are plenty of them, about 40 in all. Should I start calling? And what should I ask? Um, not sure. Uh, let's talk about it first. I mean, you can't just call and ask if they know Maddie and Nate now, can you? He smiled. Well, I guess not. That would definitely put them on guard. I'm sure the owners would be protective of them. 
Carrie gazed out the window for a few minutes in silence, watching the other cars speed past. She allowed her mind to wander, which was when her best ideas would come to her. She imagined herself as Maddie wanting to be alone with Nate. What would she want? Where would she want to go? Carrie glanced back at the listing of B&Bs in front of her. She pulled out the map, tucked between her seat and the door, and opened it up to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. She began marking down where each of the B&Bs were located and how far away they were from the, down, from the town of Bethany. As Devon pulled into a restaurant off Interstate 40, Carrie beamed. I've narrowed it down to five places. I'll call them after we eat. Chapter 82 with full bellies and a full tank of gas, Devin and Carrie started off toward Oklahoma City. With only about four and a half hours to go, they were anxious to get settled in for the night. Carrie once again set up her makeshift office on the passenger seat and was ready to begin calling the B&Bs on her list. I remember something about North, so I think I'll begin there, she said, punching a number into her cell phone. Do you know what you're going to say? I haven't got a clue. Someone answered her call. Oh, hello, my name is Carrie, and I'd like some information on your B&B, &B, if I may. She asked questions that she felt might give her a hint of where Maddie and Nate would have stayed. She asked about guests returning often, whether they had any regulars who could give them a reference, and any other leading questions that came to her mind, but nothing, not even a small <clears throat> clue that any of the b and she called might be the one. Well, she said, Here's the last one. It's called Heritage Manor, ran by Carolyn and AJ. Let's give it a try. The phone rang about six times before a young sounding voice answered. Good afternoon, Heritage Manor, bed and breakfast. How may I help you? Hi there. Um, my name is Carrie, and I'm trying to find a romantic spot for me and my boyfriend to hide away for a few days. What's your B&B &B like? She looked up at Devin with a what else can I say, and her eyes smiled, and shrugged her shoulders. Well, you have definitely called the right place, Carolyn replied tenderly. We have regulars here all the time. In fact, one lovely couple has been coming here for years, probably over 15 now that I think of it. Anyway, such a dear, dear couple. Would you like to come and visit us? How about this weekend? Carrie asked, looking up at Devin, who nodded his head approvingly. We have one charming room left and would be happy to reserve it for you. All I need is a name. Devin was one step ahead of Carrie. He had already fished out his credit card and handed it to her. She read the name and number off for Carolyn and wrote down the reservation number, the time they would check in, and the directions. She knew this was more of an assignment to see if Maddie had ever been there, but Carrie had a tingling sensation in her stomach. She knew intuitively this had to be the place. The woman, Carolyn, was so sweet and nice that Carrie instantly liked her. This would be a place that Maddie would, would enjoy, too. Carrie hung up and looked up at Devin through her crystal seascape blue eyes and smiled at him and said, Thanks. Hey, all in the name of research. Research? Yeah, I want to research you. She gave him a little kiss on the cheek. Carrie awoke in the hotel in Oklahoma City the following morning, snuggling in, in a warm, comfortable bed with Devin at her side. She watched as he slept peacefully and wondered what he was dreaming about. He slowly opened one eye to see what Carrie was doing. She smiled. Hello, he said groggily. Good morning. Carrie was her usual early morning chip herself. Ready to rise and shine? No, he pulled her toward him. They snuggled for a few minutes, talking about anything and enjoying the tranquility of the morning. It had been a long drive, and they were both still very tired. But soon afterwards, they had made love, showered, dressed, and were ready for a quick breakfast downstairs before the short drive to the agency. Carrie had been looking forward to this visit for a long time, and in just a few short days, they would be visiting the B&B &B that hopefully was Maddie and Nate's favorite getaway place, the one Thomas used to talk so much about. Do you have the directions, he asked as he walked, and Carrie pranced toward their blazer. Yep, right here in my notes. It's not far. Before long, they were in front of the agency, staring up at the unique, impressive building that appeared to be nothing but tinted windows. Wow, I remember Thomas talking about this place, but I never expected this, Carrie exclaimed. 
They'd had the chance to enjoy the splendor of the manicured lawns and gardens as they drove down the winding road that led to the building, about a half a mile of road between the main highway and the agency's private parking lot. It was very impressive. Well, it does us no good to just stand here, Devin remarked, and they both headed off towards the main doors. Once inside, they were even more in awe. It was definitely a city inside a city. Beautiful water fountains were everywhere, some with huge statues, probably dating back to the Renaissance. The lobby resembled a huge shopping mall, but with many extra features that would not be found in a regular mall. They cautiously approached the guard desk and were spotted by a young golden redhead smiling and eager to assist. May I help you? She giggled. Yes, ma'am. Devin Arkville began. He pulled out his FBI badge and Carrie did the same. We're here to see Dr. Jeffrey Lewis, please. And do you have an appointment? She giggled again. No, ma'am. We're just hoping we could catch him in. Devin replied very professionally. One moment, please, and I'll see if he's available. After a few short minutes, they found themselves being escorted to Dr. Lewis's office located on the 10th floor. Lewis's secretary took custody of the FBI agents and offered them drinks or anything else they needed. The two sat in her office for about five minutes before Dr. Lewis buzzed his secretary and gave her permission to escort them to his private office. Carrie was instantly impressed by the room. It was huge and beautiful, and the view was spectacular. Devin wasn't sure what to think of it, but he knew lots of money had been poured into this place. Please, please, come in and make yourselves comfortable, Dr. Lewis directed from the desk. I'll be with you in just a moment. He was writing something in a folder. When he finished, he slid it across his desk and stood to properly welcome the two. Agents, exactly how may I help you? He asked with a warm smile and outstretched hand. Carrie grabbed Lewis's hand and gave him a strong shake. I'm Agent Carrie Clark. Not Thomas's Carrie Clark, he asked excitedly. Carrie nodded. I'm Agent Devil Arvel, sir, Devin added. Well, 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 this is indeed a surprise. Please have a seat. Let's talk. They all took a seat on the sofas that were in the middle of Lewis's office. Oh, my, this is indeed a treat. Thomas told me so much about you, Carrie. I should have recognized you at once. But I'm not sure that I know you, Agent Orville. I was Brio's partner before he died on the Olson Edwards case, sir. Dr. Lewis lowered his eyes and bowed his head. He was quiet for a few seconds before he spoke. Yes, that was indeed tragic, indeed. Yes, it was, Carrie added. His attitude changed from solemn to excited. So what can I do for you two? Are you here on a new assignment? Not really, Carrie replied. We're... Devon jumped into the conversation at that point. Sir, we would like to know a little more about this place and what Miss Ed Edwards did for you while she was employed here. I see. Well, there isn't much to talk about now, is there? We're a temporary placement agency, and Maddie Edwards worked for us. He studied the two agents before continuing, short, sweet, and simple. This is a very expensive-looking office for just a temporary agency. That is, if you ask me, Carrie beamed. Lewis's phone rang, and he excused himself as he took the call, but he had a puzzled look on his face, which Carrie noted immediately. Devin stood to admire the view, and Carrie walked to one of the bookshelves and picked up an old picture of Toby and Maddie. Toby looked to be about eight or nine years old. She was a wonderful mother, Lewis stated from behind Carrie. It made her jump. She hadn't realized he had finished his phone call. I know, she paused. Thomas loved her very much. Much more than you'll ever know, Miss Clark. Have you seen Toby since you've been here? Not yet, but we definitely will. The three stood in silence for a few more moments, staring at the picture, until the doctor offered to take them on a quick tour of the facility. Of course, they couldn't see everything since it was a secured building, but he was sure they would enjoy what he could show them. In about an hour's time, the two agents were back in their car, headed to their hotel. I'm not exactly sure what that accomplished. Are you? Carrie asked. Not yet, but I will. Hey, want to drive by the Botanical Gardens? I hear it's quite a beautiful place. The next couple of days passed quickly. They were not ready to visit Thomas because 
There were still too many unanswered questions, so the two spent time driving around the city to get a good idea of where and how far apart all the places were. But soon they were heading up Interstate 35 toward the small town of A-Line, Oklahoma. They were only on the road for a short time before Devin was looking for the exit for Highway 412. Carrie was enjoying the drive when she suddenly remembered something. Devin, yes. Thomas told me that he went to the B&B &B one time with his parents. It was a birthday present. You see, they never took him there, which always made him curious. So for a birthday wish one year, he was asked to go to the B&B. &B. The only thing he really remembered, aside from not being allowed to watch any television, was that there were lots of animals and a man who wore a funny round black hat. A round black hat. That gives us a lot to go on, doesn't it? But... We're about to find out because we take the next right and then it's only a few miles. They pulled slowly up the, the driveway of the B&B &B and Carrie instantly fell in love with the old house. Wow, this place is just too cool, she exclaimed, jumping from the car. Devin was anxious to get out and stretch his legs. Carrie took a long, deep breath and stretched her arm high into the air. As she was ex exhaling slowly, a rather short, older man greeted them with a warm smile. Hello, you must be the Arvels. Welcome to Heritage Manor. I'm AJ. He had a big, warm smile and a twinkle in his eyes, and he was carrying a little round black hat. Chapter 83 The two agents unpacked their bags and knew that the small, cozy room would do just fine. It wasn't modern, but wonderfully decorated with handmade quilts, curtains, and antique fixtures. Carrie loved the place and felt completely at home. Want to take a walk around the grounds, she asked. Devin was about to fall asleep, walking in a, rocking in a chair by the window. Sure. He slapped his legs, yawned, and stood only to bump his head on the ceiling beams. Ouch, Carrie yelped. Isn't that what I was supposed to have said? Devin rubbed his sore head. Sloping ceilings, better watch yourself. Besides, that's what you get for being a hundred feet tall. He shook his head and smiled at her as he opened the door to their room. They admired the quaint old house as they walked the halls and descended the stairs. Carolyn greeted them as soon as they entered the living room. She spoke slowly with a loving warmth that Carrie had never experienced before. Good afternoon. It's absolutely beautiful outside. You have plenty of time to take a stroll before dinner if you'd like. She gave them another of her warm, welcoming smiles, and Carrie instantly smiled back. Carolyn had the type of smile that was impossible to resist. I believe we will, thank you, Devin winked at Carolyn, who continued to grin. Carrie walked out through the small gate and turned to admire the beautiful building. The birds were chirping, the sky was clear, except for a few small white puffy clouds, and there was a slight northerly breeze. From what she could see, Carrie figured there were at least three stories to the manor. The red roof gave the building an inviting warmth that made her eager to explore all the rooms. She could see decks on each level and wondered how to get to some of them. A woman was, a woman was standing on the top deck and Carrie wished she could get up there. She waved at the woman who waved back. I bet the view is spectacular from up there, Carrie said, pointing to the roof. Devin turned and watched the woman, who stood staring blankly off into the horizon. There was a white shawl thrown over her shoulders, and her posture told a story of loneliness. As he continued to watch, the woman slowly raised her arms and loosened her hair, which fell down her back, beautiful long black hair that shimmered in the afternoon sun. Devin took Carrie by the arm and pulled her to the trail a few feet away. Once in the shade, he turned to her and spoke quietly. Take a good long look at that woman on the roof. She looks very content up there. I bet the view is beautiful. I wonder how you get up there. You don't. What do you mean you don't? Carrie asked offensively. Exactly what I said. You don't get up there. Only her. Why would you say that? Devin leaned over to Carrie and whispered in her ear. Because that is your Maddie. Chapter 84 Dr. Lewis called an emergency meeting with Dr. Greg Hart, Harold Davidson, and Director John Green. He paced the floor nervously, waiting for Dr. Greg Hart to arrive. 
Everyone else was already present, eager to know why their weekend had been so rudely interrupted, especially Davidson and Green, who had to fly in from Washington, D.C. on the red eye. Are you going to explain to us what in the name of hell is going on? Green asked. Yes, please do. I thought we had solved all your problems months ago, Davidson added. Lewis loathed both of them, but he knew he had to tolerate them. He tried to calm himself before he continued, I will, when Greckhardt gets here. Lewis walked to the huge floor-to-ceiling windows and gazed out at the beautiful landscape. The trees had already changed color, and the gorgeous reds, yellow, browns, and golden colors were an inspiration to him. He took in a deep breath and tried to remember what his wife kept telling him. God helps those who help themselves, and Lewis was going to help himself. He was pulled from his thoughts as Greckhardt entered the room. Greckhardt nodded at the three men sitting on the sofas and looked nervously at Lewis. What's happened now? he asked. Carrie sat nervously at the dinner table. She glanced up at Devon, then back down at her plate. She was so excited she wasn't sure she could eat. As Carolyn walked in from the kitchen, Carrie's arm jerked, and she knocked over her glass of water. The fluid aimed directly for Devon's lap. Carolyn grabbed the small towel hanging from her apron and dabbed at the slow-flowing water. She smiled at Carrie and said, It's okay, sweetheart. We'll fix it. I'll get you another. Carrie apologized and was embarrassed. Devon kept looking at her as though asking what was wrong. She moved her lips with no voice, saying, I don't know. Carolyn brought Carrie a fresh glass of water with lemon. Here you go, my dear. Carrie smiled. Thank you. As Carolyn headed back to the kitchen... Carrie asked. Um, Carolyn? Yes. Are we the only guests at the moment? Carolyn hesitated for a moment and then replied, No, we have another, but you probably will not see her. She had a terrible loss in her life and is recuperating. She smiled and left the room. Nicely put, Devon said, winking at Carrie. After dinner, Devon had requested a meeting with Carolyn and A.J., who now sat quietly in the living room. Carolyn wore her usual warm smile, and A.J. had a cup of tea in his hands. "'You wanted to see us, Mr. Arville?' Carolyn asked from her seat. "'Is everything all right with your room?' "'Oh, yes, everything is just perfect. In fact, things are way too perfect.' He was standing in front of them, with Carrie in a small chair slightly behind him. "'I just need to talk with you for a few moments.' "'Well, what can we do for you?' she asked. Devon handed her a picture of Maddie Olson Edwards.' A.J.'s eyes became huge, and his face white, whitened as fear gripped at his heart. Carolyn's eyes watered with tears. They both refused to take the picture from Devon, nor would they look him directly in the eyes. Nevin knelt in front of Carolyn with his badge in his hand. Carolyn, please, we only want to speak with her. We're not here to hurt her. Greg Hart remained after the other two had left. Lewis, I do hope you know what you're doing. Yes, I believe I do. They both walked over to the window and gazed out together. No words were spoken between the two men, but a deep understanding and agreement would be upheld by both. Carrie sat with A.J. and Carolyn in the living room as Devon ascended the stairs toward Maddie's room. He approached cautiously, although he knew that she would not be armed or dangerous. He knocked on the door. There was no response. He used the key Carolyn had given him and entered slowly. Maddie did not look surprised. She sat quietly in a chair in the corner with her shawl covering her legs and a book in her hands. Agent, I've been expecting you, she said calmly. Carolyn wept into her hands and A.J. tried to console her. Carrie went to her and knelt beside her. Why are you doing this? Carolyn cried. Hasn't she been through enough? Is your stupid career that important to you? Yes, she has been through enough, more than enough. Carrie took the locket from her neck and handed it to Carolyn. Toby is my friend, and I owe this to him. Carolyn opened the locket and looked puzzled as she saw Maddie's young face smiling back at her. I wear this to always remember that I'll never forget. Thomas was a friend, and he didn't deserve this. I owe it to him to find his mother, Carrie explained. Devon returned a short time later and stood solemnly at the door. Carrie looked at Devon, who winked back. Carrie knew in her heart that everything would be fine. Well, Carolyn, a woman's voice said, how about some of your wonderful homemade apple pie that's supposed to melt in your mouth? 
Excuse me? Carolyn asked between tears. I'm so sorry, Carolyn. I broke. I had to tell him about it. Maddie stood slightly behind Devin with a huge smile and tears streaming down her cheeks. Carrie ran to her and gave her a huge hug. We've been looking for you for so long, she cried.